Welcome back. In the last two videos, I proposed a new structure for how the brain stores knowledge, and I argued that this is not just a possibility, it's the only plausible way your brain could work. Today I want to show you why this model makes so much sense, why it fits what we know about the brain structure, and why this is such an exciting direction, not just for neuroscience, but for the future of artificial intelligence. Seriously, this is groundbreaking stuff. When we really understand how knowledge is structured in the brain, we're uncovering a blueprint for how AI could be dramatically more efficient, intelligent, and human-like. Your brain runs on just 20 watts, yet it shows understanding and common sense far beyond today's AI systems. Doesn't that deserve a closer look? I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. Beyond AI, I've developed software for neurological test instruments and neural simulators. I created the Future AI Society to explore how neuroscience can inform smarter, more human-like AI. I'm using our open source brain simulator projects for simulations and demonstrations throughout this video series. If you want to experiment with your own neural circuits, you can download the brain simulator 2 from GitHub and try out these neural circuits. Let me quickly recap. In the last video, I showed how knowledge can be represented as a graph of relationships complete with inheritance and exceptions. We can represent the concept that Fido is a dog with just a few neurons. Further, if a dog has fur, then Fido inherits the has fur attribute on the fly. But if Stubby is a dog and dogs have tails, yet Stubby has no tail, the exception overrides just that attribute. He's still furry. This structure enables incredible compression of information just like the brain needs, and AI does too. Now, here's where things get even more exciting. Let's talk about the neocortex, the folded outer surface of your brain. If you unwrapped it, it would form a ragged disk about a foot across. On one surface would be gray matter packed with neurons arranged in six layers. And below that is white matter, a tangled mass of axons connecting everything together. It resembles an old plug board from the early days of computing. And here's the key observation. The neocortex appears surprisingly uniform. Unlike a computer chip where different regions look and act very differently, the neocortex consists of millions of repeating structures called cortical columns. These aren't identical, but they're close, which raises a new question. If all these columns are so similar, how do they produce such vastly different capabilities from vision to language to reasoning to love? I believe there's a compelling answer. Each cortical column functions like a node in a graph. Let's break that down. The brain has three major parts. The brainstem, which keeps us alive by managing things like heartbeat and breathing. The cerebellum, which handles coordination and motor learning. And at the top, the neocortex, where conscious thought, planning, and reasoning happen. That's where the cortical columns live. These columns are small, about 100 neurons each, and vertically organized through all six layers of the cortex. Each one acts like a tiny processing unit. In early human brain development, all columns are basically the same, but based on what signals they receive, say from the eyes, the ears, or from other cortical regions, they specialize. So the visual cortex becomes tuned to edges and colors, while the prefrontal cortex learns to plan and reason. But the key is they all start with the same circuitry. This suggests the cortex is built from a single, repeated module, a general purpose building block. Now here's where this totally breaks from traditional AI. 
Modern artificial neural networks or even predictive coding models assume smooth gradients, statistical functions, and uniform layers. They can do impressive things like pattern recognition, but they fall short when you ask them to reason, understand exceptions, or explain concepts. Cortical columns don't fit that mold, partly because biological neurons are just too slow to be used that way. Instead, cortical columns fit perfectly with a graph-based knowledge model. In this model, each column is a node, like Fido or Dog, with connections that represent relationships like is a, has a, part of, and so on. These nodes can inherit attributes, handle exceptions, and even form bidirectional links. For example, if Fido was a dog, we can activate Fido and retrieve all the attributes of dogs, unless there's an exception. And we can also activate dog and discover its instances, like Fido. This graph structure gives us meaningful symbolic reasoning, something today's artificial neural networks just can't do. Let's take our previous example of Fido as a dog and a dog has fur and rearrange the neurons so they form into the conceptual layers of the neocortex. Near the top of each column is the output neuron. In this case, it's the Fido output or the dog output. These are the neurons which fire in the event that Fido or dog is the result of a query. In a layer below are the input neurons, where query inputs happen. As we described in the previous video, if your brain needs to know what FIDO is, it fires the FIDO input neuron and the IS a neuron and the dog output neuron will fire. So how would this actually work in the brain? Let's say we want to store the fact that FIDO is a dog we need to allocate a new or locate an already defined column for Fido, Dog, and Isa. These columns each include an in neuron and an out neuron, plus a pool of pre-wired neurons acting as AND gates, used to represent relationships and the supporting neurons which can fire the necessary spike bursts to implement the heavy in learning. When learning this relationship, we need to strengthen two key synapses, one from the is a column to an AND gate in the FIDO column, and another from that gate to the OUT neuron in the DOG column. To make the inverse relationship work, we also strengthen a mirror connection from DOG to FIDO with the relationship type set to IS INSTANCE OF. Most of the synaptic connections inside the column already exist, along with the connections to neighboring columns. They just start with a near-zero weight. Meaning is created by selectively strengthening a tiny subset of synapses. The physical structure is already in place, and learning just activates it. If a connection is needed between nearby columns, the brain can utilize one of the shorter lateral connections. If the connection is between columns at a greater distance, the connection uses one of the longer connections which dives into the white matter deeper in the brain. In our computer simulations, connections are represented by a few numbers in an array, so we don't need to make this distinction and we treat all connections as lateral. Additional neurons within the column support functions like firing the bursts needed for heavy and learning, setting up inverse relationships, ensuring that a column is only allocated once and not reused until its meaning is forgotten, handling exceptions, and managing local redundancy for robustness and noise resistance. This is such a powerful model it explains why columns need only about a hundred neurons. That's enough for input, output, a dozen or so AND gates, and the other functions I mentioned. It also suggests that most of the brain's neurons are not there for brute force learning. They're the scaffolding, waiting to be given meaning through experience. 
The brain works not as a statistical engine, but as a biological graph processor, where concepts are nodes and relationships are precise, structured connection. And because the neocortex is full of these pre-allocated columns, we can represent millions of concepts and link them quickly in incredibly flexible, powerful ways. So here's the bottom line. If you're wondering how the brain achieves understanding, generalization, and common sense, this is how. If you're wondering why today's AI lacks those abilities, it's because it doesn't do this. Cortical columns aren't just interesting anatomy, they are the nodes in the graph of thought. If we want to build AI that actually thinks, we need to stop layering up weights and start wiring in structure. If this resonates with you, if you want to see where these ideas go, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. And if you want to dig deeper, join the Future AI Society. It's free and help us shape the next generation of intelligent systems, and you can also participate in our online conversations. And as always, thanks for watching.